So welcome to another episode of Vlogged In or Vlogged In. Let me know in the comments below if you like either of those or if you have your own suggestion for this, this name for this channel and these videos. I got these in comments and I was cracking up hearing both of them. I didn't think of that at all and I think that's hilarious. So go down and check my community tab on my page and go vote for which of those two names that you want to have. If you're watching this the day of the premiere, I'm going to also have a poll on my Instagram stories and then I'll be combining the amount of votes for what's going to go forward. So if it's a really close tie or if you have a name in the comments below and it gets a ton of thumbs up, I'll do another round of votes for what to call this series on my channel. But let's get started in today's video. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of bike upgrades and they're the most simplest of things, but I've been looking forward to trying these products out as well as we're going to go for just a basic coffee ride. I want to ride down to the local park and have my typical morning coffee outside just to mix it up a little bit. And I think I have a good system to actually how to carry cold brew with you so that it's nice and still cold even in an uninsulated bottle when you get there. So I'm going to take you with me and then we're going to get into a little bit of Q&A. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm going to start doing this maybe weekly or bi-weekly to take a handful of questions that I get from my followers on there to answer while out on a ride midway, especially if it's a solo ride, so you can have some something that you might wanted to know answered on the channel. So let's get into the two upgrades, which I think I've discovered and you've seen by the title of this video, the best bell period. So let me get into this a little bit and show you why. This is the Granite Design Cricket Bell. I've been a big fan of riding a bell on your bike mountain, road, whatever, and I use it all the time for pedestrians, other cyclists, vehicles, or anything else. So I'm constantly using that, but it has a ding feature. And when you're typically on trail, you're going to see people with either a timber bell or just a literally loose bell with a Velcro strap around it to make noise on the trail for other animals or other hikers because you're constantly moving around. You might not be able to have your thumb function a, a bell and you're just riding through, especially if it's real technical, that's the last thing you really want to think about. So this basically combines the best of both worlds. And let me show you how. So basically, this is a dual function bell to go on your bike, and it does fit a variety of handlebar sizes. So most bells that you see on road bikes or like the bell you've seen on my bike, you can have a ding function, which is great. But when you're on trail and you're riding through terrain, you're, especially on a drop bar bike, your hands are on your hoods typically and you can't reach back down to the center of your stem typically where most people mount their bells so all you would do with this the cricket bell is pull it and then as you ride it dings and super smart and then when you get back on road or you don't need that function anymore you simply do that and it's silent until so like the simplest but best bell i think hands down. So comment below and send me a link to a bell that you think does this better and for this small of form factor. And it comes in at just 42 grams for all you weight weenies out there. Then the next product is super simple and it's just something I've been wanting. This is by no means groundbreaking, but it does have a cool function. Is the Granite Design Aux bottle cage. So this, I need another side loader on my Cobalt Warhawk that's right off screen. For my SF to LA trip, I needed a side loader cage and with COVID and everything, I just had an Amazon Prime, the easiest and fastest shipping side loader cage that I got. It's an aluminum cage. It worked, but it's constantly something I have to bend and flex down because it seems to always get loose on me. And especially on gravel, I didn't want to potentially eject my bottle. And since I do run my outer shell half frame bag a lot of times, my down tube bottle, I do have to use a side loader cage. So Granite Design supplied this cage for me, but again, by no means paid by them to do this video. I will be reviewing a handful of gravel product videos that I have from multiple different brands and these products will probably be featured again, but that'll be in a later video. So make sure to turn notifications on so you can see cool, innovative products. The real big difference with this cage that I do like, especially for smaller riders, it comes with this rubber pad that basically sits right behind your bottle bosses to give you a really secure mounting area so that you can run the supplied straps through these holes down here, around your frame, around your down tube or anywhere else on your bike and give you a really secure fit to put a bottle somewhere that you either don't have mounting bosses for or just need to add extra water to. So I'm gonna try this out and let you know 
after my Q&A, if it held well, how stiff it is to get in and out, because that's the one thing with a lot of side loaders I've noticed. Sometimes they're hard to get in and out with the bottle, so you're going to find out in a little bit. So let's get the shrew brew, as I like to call it, into my bottle, and then put these parts on and go out for a little spin. So I wanted to find like a bench in a shaded area. That was the goal. That didn't happen. So it's very exposed out here. I'm in Santiago Canyon. And so I just decided just to park it somewhere where I found some shade. Could lean the bike up and talk to you. Hopefully uninterrupted by people going by. Also, this cage is rad. It's just stiff enough. But you can totally get it. Even like top loading it is pretty easy. Some cages don't do that. But it seems to work pretty well. I'm liking it so far. So before we get into the questions and answers. Oh. Still, still a little bit of ice, a little bit of dirt. Oh yeah, oh that's nice. You know, I'm by a crick, you know? <laughs> so there are a lot of flies, but it's it's kind of peaceful. This is kind of nice. I should do this more. Comment below if you take yourself on little coffee mini solo bike dates. Is that what this is? Let me know. So what I'm gonna do now, and thank you for everyone who already responded, because I'm actually doing this video the day of that I posted this on Instagram. So I'm going to screenshot everybody's questions and try to get to them slowly over the course of this vlogged in series. So if your question didn't make it this time, it might make it later down as I do more of these because this kind of helps out and gives me a reason to go ride and, you know, find cool little spots to hang out in. So let's go through right now and see what's up. So thank you for everyone who asked questions. Really appreciate it. First one, let's go down to the bottom. Gear I've always packed but never use. Honestly, I haven't needed to use, and this, ah, I almost don't want to say this because now the next vlog it's going to happen. I've never had to use a tube or my Turbolito. That's what I actually bring. And I have a video for those in the links below to replace or fix a flat. I've been lucky enough that all of my flats have been, been able to seal themselves with the sealant I'm using or has been fixed with a Dyna plug. Like you saw the worst flat I've gotten basically almost to date was the SF to LA trip. The one before that, I don't remember how many, I remember it was five or six years ago down Mount Wilson. How did you start cycling? What was your motive? Basically, there was no motive. I was just bored in college. I found my dad's old 10 speed road bike, literally had 10 speeds and just put air in it and just went riding. And I just noticed that it really did calm me down when I was really stressed out and I was in college and I was going for a bachelor's degree in three years, so an accelerated program, and I just had a hard time kind of relaxing and kind of turning my brain off for a little while just to kind of process life basically and projects. So cycling, initially that's kind of what happened and I got more into it and the bike didn't fit for my dad, so that snowballed me into looking for something my size. But that was the origin story, but I also do have something about the origin story of me and the channel and a little bit about my cycling history that I did, and I'll put that again in the links below if you wanna watch that. It's a thing I did for the South Illinois University. I did like a presentation for them. How do you get over chain ring size insecurity? This is great. 38 or 40 T's feels fine on purpose, but can't help it. Honestly, <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I run a 34 and it really just depends on what kind of terrain you're riding and what kind of purpose that bike has. So for my Cobalt Warhawk, I've explained this in prior videos where it really depends on your front chain ring size and your rear cassette ratio, as well as what is your highest gear. So on my E13 cassettes, that's a nine tooth. 
So that's two teeth smaller than an 11, like on most cassettes, which is gonna basically add six teeth in the front. So basically if you ran a 34, but you had a nine tooth cassette, that would feel like a 4011. And that's typically what most gravel bikes come with stock, unless they're a higher end build with maybe a 1042 SRAM setup. So right now I'm running a 1052 Garbrook cassette. Do I miss the nine? Do I wish I had it back? Yes. But I do like the 52 for climbing and I have that cassette in for a long term review for a future video. So you know what, ride what you ride. I can still do 25 to 27 miles an hour. So on a long flat descent where you you know guys are passing me past that, that's fine. But for the intended use of this bike, anything faster than that, I'm probably on gravel and not gonna push it faster. And if I'm on road, you know what, take it easy. You know, that's why I'm building the Marauder bike with the 42.9, that's gonna feel basically like a road bike and it still has a 42, 46 climbing gear, which is good for most light duty gravel or road. So that's why I geared that bike accordingly. Uh, here's a good one that I, I kind of go over in a video, so I'll briefly go over it. How did you train for your SF and LA ride? And did you ride the week prior or rest? So this is a great question. And basically what me and Mario did was we rode every single weekend long distance. So we slowly edged up the mileage, but basically what we tried to do is ride the bikes fully loaded so we could get used to how they handle and get used to just the fatigue. Because yeah, we could probably go crush two 80 mile days back to back with just you know water and a saddlebag, no problem. But when your bike's doubled or almost tripled in weight, that really does add a lot to the overall experience. So we started at the 40, 50 mile weekends. Then we just kind of inched up about 10 miles a, a week until I think the last big ride that we did, we did a century and then I believe a 60 mile or 70 mile the next day because we looked at the route and the worst combination of days was 80 and then 100. So if we could basically do that, we were fine. So we just went out for honestly just distance. We didn't necessarily end time. We didn't have to do crazy climbing days. We did add climbing in because obviously that's going to be a factor, but just trying to do the mileage and be out as many hours as we thought we would. We did rest about four or so days before the trip, maybe a full week. I don't remember exactly. And then we did do a, a easy city spin that night to get food prior to the ride, just to open up the legs a little bit. I think total we might have ridden 10 or 15 miles a day the night before. So this will be the last one for this vlog. I don't want this one to drag on too long. How's your channel doing since going full time? To be brutally honest, I wish it was doing better. To be very frank and I'm very you know transparent with all this, it's not paying the bills, even with the Patreon support, which I absolutely am so thankful for every single one of you that supports the channel every single month. But right now with AdSense, the very little merch sales that I do, and that's why I'm working with Decal Spec to hopefully have some stickers for sale, is I'm, on a on the best month, I'm maybe making half of what I actually need to pay like rent and normal bills. And that's just trying to get by. I'm not buying anything extravagant. I'm just basically buying food. And so unfortunately, I wish I could at least break even. If I could, that would be a, a huge saving grace where I'm not pulling from savings. I'm obviously trying to sell parts as you saw in the last video. So make sure to follow me on Instagram so you can see that. All those little things are what I'm trying to do to scramble to make ends meet to pull as little money as I can every single month to make this work. Transparently, I'm looking for work. I want this to be my full-time thing. I've been giving it a go for quite a while now while looking for jobs. There just isn't a ton of options in the career I want to go to. And so that's something that I really hope this does turn around, you know, and, and keep going up in the direction I want it to, but it fluctuates so much to where it's, it's really hard to depend on views or AdSense. You know, I've had months to where, no joke, I'll make nine videos or more and make 450 bucks. And so, you know, that's where it does get really tough. So I'm by no means discouraged. I'm committed to pumping out three videos a week unless something crazy happens on this channel and cross my fingers that I don't have to go back to normal life. But I am open to other things or avenues or creative or creating content for other companies as well. So so I hope you like this question and answer section for this vlog. There will be more. So thank you for everyone who sent their questions. Keep an eye on the community tab and on Instagram so you can be in the next one. So that's going to be the end of this video. Make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you can see every single video I produce for this channel, as well as you can support me on Spreadshirt and Patreon. And if you want to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, links for all those things are in the links below. And thanks for watching this episode of Locked In. Let's get locked in today. Like